Ladies and gentlemen, we hit 104 live viewers on the playback stream last night. That is a new record. We have never broken 100. You guys are amazing. I love you. We're building a community over there. We have almost 900 members, so join up. We'll be on there tonight at 9 o'clock talking ball, watching some film, and watching some other NBA games. Come on through. Playback.tv slash run it back Philly. Bang. I haven't been roasting Doc Rivers or blaming Doc Rivers or getting angry at Doc Rivers for like the whole month of March, really. And it's because he was doing the right thing uh, with the lineups and, and the Sixers played great through the month of March against one of the hardest schedules in the NBA. But last night's coaching performance, he was either trying to lose or he was literally having a stroke on the sideline. Run it back, Philly. No fraud, no fanboys, no intro. Back Nation, what is good? Hit the like button. Sixers lose to the Denver Nuggets in one of the weirdest games I've ever seen in my entire life, and I still can't figure it out. I don't know if Doc Rivers was intentionally trying to lose this game. Now look, they play without James Harden, they play without Embiid, they rest Embiid in, in the matchup of MVP candidates, which is annoying as a sports fan, but whatever. Give him his rest. Uh, Sixers are the third seed in the East. They pretty much clinched the third seed unless they lose out, which at this point looks kind of possible. So these games don't really, really, really matter. But would you still not like to win the game? I think you would. There's a couple things that happened in this game that tells me, for whatever reason, Doc Rivers was not trying to win this game. First of all, Paul Reed played every backup center minute in the month of March, and the Sixers won eight in a row. Paul Reed played every backup center minute in the Toronto Raptors series in the playoffs last year, and the Sixers won the series. I remember a video recently where I said Doc Rivers has been coaching well, but I'm going to hold my breath, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Whatever I said, I still don't trust this guy. And I still feel like at some point he's going to find a way to play Dwayne Dedman over Paul Reed. Well, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, it happened against the Phoenix Suns a little bit. Last night, it happened a lot. The first thing is, this is disrespectful, a slap in the face to a young, hardworking athlete like Paul Reed. Why does he keep getting punished for playing well? Somebody tell me why this guy keeps getting punished for playing well. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The most frustrating part about it is we were saying the same thing over a year ago. And we're still here doing the same thing with the same guy. Why is Paul Reed getting punished for playing well? So you go into this game without Embiid. What would the obvious decision be? Start Paul Reed. No, Doc Rivers actually starts... Dwayne Dedman. He starts Dwayne Dedman. Dwayne Dedman is a player who has so little NBA value that he was released by a playoff team not too long ago. The Sixers pick him up, and Doc Rivers starts him in an NBA game. That actually happened. Doc Rivers' obsession with P.J. Tucker and George Niang will also be the downfall of this team. But Doc Rivers starts Dwayne Dedman. The Sixers start out the game sluggish, giving up points in the paint, as can be predicted when you have P.J. Tucker, Tobias Harris, and Dwayne Dedman on the floor. As soon as they go to Paul Reed, Jalen McDaniels, Daniel House Jr., 
as soon as they put athletes on the floor who can actually play defense, they make a comeback in the second quarter. In the start of the third quarter, Doc Rivers starts Dwayne Dedman again. The Nuggets make a run again. And then when you think, when you think, okay, he's going to go to that athletic lineup now so the Sixers can make the run that they made in the second quarter, he takes it a step further. And instead of playing Paul Reed at backup, backup center behind Dwayne Dedman, he goes to P.J. Tucker at center. The combination of P.J. Tucker and George Niang at the 4 and the 5 is unsustainable in the NBA. I mean, they can't survive as a tandem for five minutes. Five minutes. Doc thought that was going to get them back in the game versus putting the athletes on the floor that got them back in the game in the second quarter. The funniest part about all of this is that Doc Rivers in his press conference literally said, I thought we struggled in the beginning of the first quarter and the beginning of the third quarter. Wow! You don't say! I mean, it, you got to go listen to his press conference. He literally said, my lineup sucked in the beginning of the first quarter and the beginning of the third quarter. That's legitimately what he said. Wayne Dedman was a minus 13. P.J. Tucker was a minus 22 in 23 minutes. And these are the guys that Doc Rivers thought should be in the game in crunch time to defend the rim. The Denver Nuggets had 13 dunks in the game. And that third quarter when Doc Rivers went Niang and P.J. Tucker at the 4 and the 5, the Nuggets went on a run and put the game away. And then he put Paul Reed back in the game. Meanwhile, Paul Reed, who didn't do anything to deserve this, in a game without Joel Embiid, where last year he clearly secured the backup center position, last night played 16 minutes. And he had 16 points, 9 rebounds, 2 steals, a block, and was a plus 5. I mean, this is the most obvious stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. You are witnessing a coach sabotage a basketball team. You witnessed it last night. You witnessed it in the playoffs last year. You witnessed it in the playoffs the year before that. If you think this is not going to happen in the playoffs this year, you are smoking grade A dust. You are smoking Amy Winehouse level of crack rocks. You are smoking Bobby and Whitney prescription drugs. Once again, all you guys did to yourself all season long was lie. All you did was lie to yourselves all season long and come at DJ Eastwood for being negative. But I predicted this shit from a mile away once again like a goddamn tarot card reader, but I'm not calling myself a genius because this is easy. This is easier to read than a fucking Dr. Seuss book. The best part of the best part about this game is that the Sixers are down by 21 points. Doc Rivers tries to throw in the towel, and the Sixers make a comeback, which should tell you that literally any combination of players and any strategy is better than Doc Rivers trying to coach a team. As soon as he tried to lose the game, they made a comeback and almost won the game. And then the game was within four points with a minute and 30 seconds left. Four points. With a minute and 30 seconds left. And he didn't put Tyrese Maxey back in the game. Doc Rivers 100% did not want to win this game. There's just no way you can convince me he wanted to win this game. He tried to forfeit. It backfired. He ended up out coaching himself. 
and then he intentionally lost to save his own ego. And this is the coach you're giving me once again for the NBA playoffs, and I got to watch this shit. But it is what it is. I will just watch him sabotage this team once again. I'll watch him make horrible decisions in crunch time. I'm going to watch him play Dwayne Dedman and Paul and P.J. Tucker at center in the playoffs when Joel Embiid goes to the bench. The Sixers are going to get smoked every time he does it. This is so easy to predict. That's all I got, man. Have a good one.